last number of years I've been very fortunate to have John's support, whether it be through Team Ireland and moving forward into CJJ in 2018 as a sponsor and then last year in 2019 we had sponsorship again but with John now retired and fully focused on motorsport it took a huge leap forward and then CJJ has now become a proper racing team so it was a natural progression from Team Ireland to CJJ and a car collection to now a full-blown race team and I'm fortunate enough to be one of the drivers on the team, Nicole's the other one. From a driver's point of view, coming from Ireland where the American dream is an extremely big thing to tackle, John and CJJ puts hope in the dream. They make you wake up and say, you oh, know, this could happen. CJJ is kind of like an academy for drivers basically help mentor and guide them in their motorsport career and try to get them to the highest level possible. They helped Craig Breen and James Rowe last year and it was incredible to watch Irish drivers progressing and getting the coverage that they deserve and getting the opportunities that they deserve and they're mentoring me in, in my career and you know I don't know everything obviously got to do with motorsport so to have people around you to help you and guide you it just takes some of the pressure off and you can just focus on purely driving so it's, um, it's an incredible opportunity. CJJ Motorsports morphed from a car collection, which it still is, into a, a full race team, telling the story of Irish motorsports through the cars. And then if we have Irish drivers, it becomes really interesting. We want to be on the grid with an Irish team at Daytona in 2022. And that's not paying somebody to put our name on the car. That's our team. That's something that I think is the art of the possible. Slippy needs. Slippy. Last year, Craig Breen and Paul Nagel won the Irish Tarmac Championship in a CJJ Ford Fiesta. That was yeah, a pretty proud moment. So we said we'd get behind a couple of drivers. We need to make sure that we're as inclusive as possible. So we're supporting Nicole 100% in a CJJ Porsche this year to do a Brit Cup in England. And we're supporting James 100% on F3 in America. With the natural progression of CJJ turning into a professional race team, it's now turned me into a full-blown professional driver. I have all these resources at my fingertips, whether it's simulator work, training outside of the car, race programs, media training, profile building, the whole thing is covered and it's all under one umbrella with CJJ. It's that last one percent um, that you have to dig deep for, that's the one that makes a difference. And he's so passionate about racing, he eats, sleeps, drinks it he just absolutely that's all he thinks about very very focused and he has matured a lot over the last couple of years and i can see it's really starting to show now in his racing and in his person i have high level of confidence that both of these uh, drivers will be successful just hard working driven they're in the gym at 6 30 in the morning they understand what it takes to win they understand you need a personality you need to work hard you've got to justify what you're doing and you've got to produce results because driving is driving but it's not everything and i feel with nicole and james we have the full package most weekends i'm away either testing cars or out in the cart or just training you know people might think that you're you're just out having fun and driving cars but it's not just that and you want to perform the best you can and that means putting in the work so i'm lucky now to be working with alan here he's my performance coach and it's just so important to be mentally fit to be able to overcome the problems that you know you're relying on a machine and sometimes it doesn't go to plan and you have to be able to cope with those situations as well. It just makes it all the better when you stand on the top of that podium and you just say, I worked for this and I deserve it. It's James Rowe that comes up on the results sheet. It's my career, it's my reputation, so I gotta make the most out of that and don't leave any stones unturned in our preparation. When you have that mindset from an early age, it only gets stronger and stronger as well, you know.
As a little kid, I'd go to school Monday to Friday and I would live for the weekend because dad would bring me to the shop and we'd go to work and I remember he used to put on little blue overalls and probably not doing a whole lot of work realistically, but I'd be here and having a good time. And my first car engine out of Junior Ireland, we ran out of here, got my first win, first lap record in that car. Then Formula Ford 1600, we ran out of here, wins and lap records in it. So there's a lot of correlation between the racing and learning bits about the motor industry all under one roof. So it's a special place. When James was uh, kind of eight, nine, ten, you couldn't leave your car keys on, on the counter, but they'd be gone missing. And you know, where James would be out driving around the field or driving up and down the drive. Between the family business and in the motor industry, my uncle being a professional race car driver, my granddad racing, the loves in our family, it's, it's in the blood. So if you want something bad enough, no matter what it is, you're going to do whatever it takes. And it's the same when I was eight, nine years old. I wanted to drive so bad, I'd come home, I'd drive. It's all I wanted to do. Like I say, oh, geez, that's boring, just going around the field. But that passion and that want to succeed has grown over the years you know eventually saved up enough to buy my own race car and then progressed up to the ranks i went to america and it's always been about hard work it's never been sitting back oh it's going to sort itself out it's always that want to succeed and that willingness to work he left and wanted to follow his dream i was obviously apprehensive but very excited for him at the same time financially emotionally and as a family too it's a huge investment uh, in every way Team Ireland was a major factor in all of this as well. He wouldn't have had the support from this extra stakeholder. There's only so far a family can bring a journey like this. James Rowe Jr. punches the air as he wins race one on the Grand Prix circuit. Absolutely delighted with that performance. Her dad or someone had a bonnet open. She was always looking in and curious about the engine and she just had to be in a car race suit or a pair of Wellingtons. And you'd look out the window and you're sure she's lying under a plastic car with a plastic tool and on she's fixing this car and she gets in and takes off around the corner of the house. So kind of knew from that point from an early stage that Nicole was going to be a car girl. The only thing I wanted was to be a driver and I watched rally and I watched race and all I wanted to do was drive. Yeah, she dropped about 6,000 hints that uh, <laughs> it would be great if we had our own car. And we could, the things we could do together and the time we could spend together. Even back then, the guy that owned the carton track said she had real pace. You know, he said she was really, really quick and he said she definitely had good potential. I hounded my dad for that car and when we first went to the track and I put on my suit, it was just the most magical moment. The emotions came at once because it was exactly what I thought it was going to be and every single Sunday, every weekend, I, I begged him to take us off to the track and go for a couple of laps. He's uh, the, the first driver I ever looked up to and I just kept waiting and waiting and hoping that someday that I get the chance to drive and be as successful as him. Nicole followed me in the car racing and, and rallying. She was always part of the service crew. She was always the first one to wash up and see what time would it be coming to service and out of service. And it's quite a lot for a girl, maybe six or seven years of age. She had to have the rally hat on, the rally jacket on. <laughs> but once she did get started, there was no turning back. So I think at this stage, it's safe to say she's faster than me anyway, so unfortunately. I had a couple of different part-time jobs when I was younger and still trying to keep the dream alive to, to hopefully compete someday. She'd say, oh yeah, no, I'm saving for this and I'm saving for that. But I think all her secret saving was saving for a race suit, saving to have her day in Mondello and saving. And she does work hard and Nicole didn't get anything handed to her. Nicole did this herself, you know, she worked for everything that she needed and she's still chasing the dream and she'll get there. These little 13 and 16 year old girls in Ireland get to see Nicole driving Formula One cars and working with Nikki, that's important stuff. And if we can empower and educate, then they never drive a sports car again, but they'll be empowered because they did. Family is very important to James and uh, he likes to have that security knowing that you know we're all there for him. In CJJ everyone's like a family you know everyone's so close it's like going from one family to another in the sense of it really is a, 
a group effort in CJJ and you could call it a family business to a degree, you know, John and Suzanne are both heavily involved, their best friend Drax involved and all the crew and it's like one of them is at an event, they're all there. It's not like one guy goes off on his own adventure and it's, it's the same thing. When you carry the CJJ logo, you're, you're not just representing John or Suzanne, you're representing a group of people and uh, it's a true family spirit. Everyone sticks together and that's what I love and everyone supports each other and it's literally like one big family and uh, no matter what, you just feel like they're going to be there for you and it's the most amazing feeling of all. James is very proud to be Irish as his family are. For us to have our son representing Ireland in motorsport is huge. We're a resilient family and um, I think that stems a lot from James's grandparents. Old Irish, very resilient and you don't give up, you keep fighting. Someone told me at eight years of age when I was trashing a car around here, would I be in America a number of years later racing Formula 3 with the likes of CJJ Motorsport on board and all these amazing people around me. It's probably described as a miracle really, you know, it's, it's just, it's mind blowing when you look back where I was and where we are now and where we're hoping to go and the plans that we have in place. It's just, um, it's kind of like a pinch yourself moment, you know. I'm a very proud Irish driver. The talent here in Ireland is just incredible and I'm going to keep pushing and uh, yeah, I'm very proud, especially when I compete outside of Ireland. It's fantastic, I mean it's a very proud moment to be honest, to see the Irish flag going and a few Irish guys even talking around here and there and saying oh there's Nicole. Look at this is her dream, everything that's going on at the minute she's just beaming inside and she has the drive and I think she'll get there. Me, I'll probably be crying. I never thought in a million years that I would get to become a CJJ driver, so I'm, I'm so grateful to John and Suzanne for believing in me. And You need the best group of people around you, you need the best machinery. I'm lucky now to have people that believe in me. Hopefully I can show some of the girls at home that you know this is possible if you just put your mind to it. Now the push is on and the drive is there and I'm doing everything I can in preparation for, for the championship this year. And yeah, let's just get the results.